Hello, what is up guys? Welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. So, last episode we actually changed these mechanics a little bit. So we have the jump over here, which is not really a mechanic, but um, the movement of our sphere itself is using the physics, and that's some kind of game mechanic, we could say. So anywhere in, well, not anywhere, but any collider could actually be considered as a game mechanic itself. So we created a jump with simple collider. We also created some rails. Um, if we wanted, we could make them turn and actually, you know, make some kind of pathway. Okay, and we also uh, created this destroyable wall, which actually, that actually uses a force um, in order to be destroyed. So, in this episode, we're gonna add one more mechanic before we start creating some heart for our game and creating some more clean 3D model. So, guys, let's go ahead and do just that. In this episode, we are going to create a door. A simple door that is locked with, um, say, a switch. So if you think about maybe uh, some N64 platformers, you have to press a switch, and then that switch would open up a door, maybe with a timer, who knows, all that kind of good stuff in this episode. So let's get started, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate these. Um, just small railings over here. So control click on some of these, and then control C. Control V to paste them. So here they are. I'm gonna go ahead and move them right here at the beginning. And these are going to be my railing. Or you know what? Actually, we could be putting it ah, here. That sounds fine. Okay, cool. And also add another platform. So that's where the wind box is now going to be. So I'm going to take it from here and put it right here. Okay, so the point of this tutorial is. It's going to have an object, so maybe another cube, because we really like using cubes. And this is going to block the ring, this is going to block the pad until somebody hits a switch somewhere. Okay, so... Alright, so we got the object over here, now we gotta find a way to destroy it. And I am going to create a script that we're gonna put on a switch, and that switch is going to look at this object and just destroy it, so... Again, let's create um, a cube. Let's be original and create a cube again. So create new 3D object cube. And on this platform right here, that is going to be a switch. So I'll go ahead and just make this small like that. And here it is. Okay, so that's our switch. I'm going to rename it because our scene is getting quite dirty and that is okay because that's our gym and eventually this is going to be gone but right now we're just creating some game mechanic uh, really fast on the fly so okay so we got our switch I'm going to create a new script on this switch that we're going to call switch object now I'm not quite sure I'm putting the object prefix after everything but that's uh, that's what I'll be doing for this tutorial Okay, so once you've got the switch object on the switch itself, let's go ahead and open up the script inside of MonoDevLab. So, again, we're going to be using pretty much the same exact thing we put in the undestroyable object. And we're going to use the uh, onCollision enter. So, private void onCollision enter, and when we enter collision, we are going to destroy another object. So let's go ahead and um, up here declare a public transform target. So we're going to call that uh, target. So don't forget the uh, transform is a type, so it needs a capital. Okay, so target is going to be the object that we want to destroy. And as simple as it might seem, we're simply going to do destroy target. Now, we could be putting it in the same exact script as a destroyable object and just tweak it around, but but eventually I also want to add animation to this, and we don't necessarily want to destroy that object, but maybe just move it away or, you know, uh, move it upward so we can still see the gate and, uh, you know, not necessarily destroy that object. So that is why I'm splitting these two. Okay, so now if you go back on your game and you, if you look at the switch, then, as you can see, there is now a target right here, and we need to assign that target, else we're going to get a null reference error. So, let's go look at the cube over here. Oh, if I move, 
next to my cube. Here it is. So that is my cube number two. I'm going to rename it for gate. And now if we go back on our switch, it takes in a target, as you can see over here. We are going to drag and drop the gate in here. Okay. So it is really, really simple, actually. We created a gate, and as you can see, we can't destroy that gate by just running into it, even if I do use a boost. We're not getting any result, but now if we go on this side, we destroy this, and step on our switch. Oh. Destroy on the game object itself. Oh, okay, so, um... We're destroying a uh, transform and that doesn't work. So in our code, we gotta do target dot game object. Little mistake on my part. Let's go ahead and try this again. And I'm going to boot it from the main menu so we don't get any any sort of error. So here's level one. And I'm gonna use my boost, destroy that wall. Oh, he almost fell. Now if you take a look in the back over here. We should see it disappear, and we did, so now I'm going to use my boost again and try to come back, and we barely made it, so here it is, we win. Okay guys, so that's that was our simple switch mechanic, and um, of course our level is not really great, I think I can actually win by just uh, doing that, but um, of course we could be making it bigger. But the point is not to balance level just yet, it's just to have some easy game mechanic and eventually we can create some art make this clean not eventually in the next episode actually we're gonna start uh, creating some clean models so we can actually use these pretty much everywhere okay oh and one more thing when we press on the switch uh, two times it is still trying to destroy the game object but it already has been destroyed so we're gonna add a safety check so right above that we're gonna do if target is not equal to null then go ahead and do your action in this case that's destroy and eventually it's going to be move or play animation okay so we've got the switch mechanic out of the way it was a really simple mechanic and um, what I'd like to do now is actually add a fail safe I mean not a fail safe but uh, some kind of way to actually lose so if we fall we never get teleported back we have to press on pause and then say menu then go back in the level that's not really efficient so what I'd like to do right now before we enter the artistic phase is um, actually just add a a check so if we're below a certain point in Y that means we die and we are respawned to the respawn point <laughs> now all of that good stuff is going to be done on the level manager so this guy over here so this one has a level manager script. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we are going to create a public transform that we're going to call respawn point. We're also going to add a private game object that is going to be the uh, player game object. We're going to get it using the uh, player tag. Okay, so if we take a look at our player over here, it has the player tag so we can easily access it. In our start, we're gonna do player is equal to game object dot find object with tag. Now make sure you take the one that has no s. So game object with tag, and it takes in a string parameter. So um, ours is player with a capital P. So let's go ahead and type in player. Don't forget the semicolon, and now we know that we have the player as a reference. So whenever we start our game, whenever we start our level, I am going to do player dot transform dot position, and we're gonna move the player to the respawn point dot position. So now our player could be starting from. We could be putting our player anywhere in the map. So maybe like here. And that wouldn't matter because whenever the game starts, whenever the level manager is being instantiated, then it's going to move him to the respawn point, which is now a uh, null. So we're going to create a new empty game object. Here it is. Make sure you rename it for respawn point. 
and maybe maybe added some kind of icon so we can see. So I'm gonna use this little uh, cyan star. Here it is. So that's our respawn point. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna use something that I can see the text. So this over here. So this yellow band over here is our a uh, yellow. I mean blue is our respawn point. Now I'm going to move it at the origin of the world right here and move it up a little bit so like that 0 0.5 and here we go now if we press play oh we haven't assigned the uh, the field my bad so let's let's select our level manager and actually drag and drop the respawn point in there here it is drag and drop alright let's press play once more and as you can see our ball was actually over here and it was teleported back to uh, the respawn point when the game started. So, just for the sake, I'll just be putting it here. Right. Alright, okay, so next thing we need to do is actually check, is our player below a certain point? So is it is it like below, say, um, 10 in Y? If it is, then let's just go ahead and bump, in, bump him back up to the respawn point. So... Let's go ahead and uh, declare ourselves a update inside of our level manager. So, below the, the start, I'm going to do private void update. And in here, this, this, it's going to be really simple. All I'll do is check if player.transform.position. So, if the position of the player in the y axis, so dot y is smaller than say minus 10 like this then we're gonna do a simple player to transform the position is now equal to player uh, I mean respawn point dot position so we're simply going to bump him back up and uh, we could also add a def function reset the timer all that kind of good stuff but we don't need it for now, right now we want to enter the artistic phase. Okay, press play on this and let's see what it gives us. So I'm moving over here and when I hit minus 10 in Y we're teleported back up. Okay, so that's uh, that's almost it but we get another error as you can see. We keep our velocity and that's that's kind of weird. So um, let's go ahead and reset our velocity as well. You know what? We're going to create a def function right now. So public void def. Here we go. And we're going to take that call over here. So the player that transform the position is equal to respawn point dot. Uh, why did I put an s over here? Okay, never mind that. Let's go in the public void def and actually do, do uh, this call. And in the update, we're going to change this lane for def, as simple like, as that. And um, I'm actually I'm actually going to go and correct that typo. It's annoying me right now. So change that here, here, and here. Okay. Right. So whenever we call def, we remove uh, we remove our player back to the respawn point. Now we also need to remove its velocity. So if we take a look right now, so we know that it's using a rigid body to move. So what we're going to do is say player dot get component and we're going to get the rigid body component. And now um, I believe there is a set velocity somewhere. So we're going to get the velocity and do I mean we're going to get the rigid body and do velocity here it is. So it is a public uh, set and get. So velocity is going to equal vector 3.0. Let's go ahead and try this out once more. And we have the error down here because, I, because I've changed the uh, respawn point field. We need to reassign it to the level manager. Okay, so I'm going to do that real quick. Select my level manager and drag and drop my respawn point once more. So now if we try and fall the velocity has been uh, pretty much reset but we still have some um, some angular velocity so we still 
our ball still rotates basically so there has to be something else we could be doing so I'm gonna do another get component rigid body right now and just to test it out um, do angular drag or angular velocity is equal to vector 3.0 press play And if we press this out, okay. Now, so now that works fine. We reset, um, we reset to the respawn point, and we got no more forces anywhere being applied. All right. So that code is going to do the job. I'll simply put my uh, rigid body inside of a field here, so we don't call get component twice. So I'll just say rigid body rigid is equal to um, player dot get component rigid body. And I'm going to do rigid.velocity is equal to vector 3.0 and also rigid.angular velocity is equal to vector 3.0. Okay guys, so if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something, please go ahead and leave it a like. It really helps me out. And if you have any question or comment, you can also leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. Alright guys, so thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.